for the last four years, most of crypto has been going on right. offshore because of the regulatory. Like this isn't a new thing. This has been true. This is in fact really central to the nature of the crypto ecosystem today. And if you look at, I mean, what fraction of volume, I can just look up numbers from today, um, you know, what fraction of volume today is happening on U.S. exchanges? Um, you know, I'm seeing out of $172 billion or so of volume, I'm seeing less than 10 of that coming from the United States. Um, so, you know, 5%, 95% offshore. 5% is not the United States you know, you know, general fraction of economic activity. I think like 30% is maybe what you would guess, right? Um, so this just has been the nature of, of the crypto ecosystem um, for I, at least the last five years. Hey, hey, everybody, it's Eddie from Tokyo. This is your cryptocurrency update from Japan. And that was Sam Bankman Freed of FTX Exchange. He moved to the Bahamas and he said he did so because of the regulatory environment. And U.S. companies have been moving offshore for four to five years. And as he checked his daily trade volume, I couldn't believe it. Only 5% of the crypto trading was happening from the United States. He is citing that there's a lack of trade offerings due to this regulatory uncertainty. And it's just not a new thing. According to him, there have been people moving offshore for many years. Now think about this. The U.S. represents 30% of the economic activity. There's no way it should be 5% of this market that is just exploding with growth. And you've got Gensler bragging about how robust the U.S. markets are. Well, maybe traditional stocks, but that's just not the future. And here we have the U.S. Treasury today announcing that it has revised or revisited its KYC laws for crypto wallets, including non-custodial wallets. Janet Yellen at the U.S. Treasury and FinCEN they want reports submitted. They want records kept. They want verifying customers in relation to transactions that involve a virtual currency that can be converted. I think the KYC is fine. Absolutely. I don't think this space uh, disagrees with that at all. But you talk about being laden with all this paperwork and transactions, more than $10,000, they'll need to report that immediately to FinCEN. And just think about this, due to the decentralized nature of a non-custodial wallet, this compliance is going to be very challenging, if not sometimes impossible. So it will definitely further drive out more econ economic activity from the United States. I think they need to streamline this process, not get stuck in the 1960s with filing reports. And there's something kind of surprising that goes along with this that you may not have thought of, and that is the cost to do KYC. Thomson Reuters survey, they found that most financial companies spent an average of 60 million US dollars on KYC compliance annually. And the T1 players shelled out up to 500 million. Wow. So, I guess if you want to look at the glasses half full, maybe start checking out the uh, top KYC solution startups. That might be a place to park your money because they're going to see an increase in the demand for their services. Here's a fun and interesting update from a RippleNet member. This is the Kuwait Finance House who made this big announcement on their website back in 2019 when it started operating an instant cross-border remittance service with the RippleNet blockchain technology. They, they conducted a number of pilots and received from the Central Bank of Kuwait a green light to move the Saudi Rial in a corridor for payments. Then in January 2021, they launched a zero fee 24 by 7 payments rail to Turkey. And then we fast forward to December 
where the headline here read that uh, KFH, the Kuwait Finance House, for the first time in Kuwait, smart watches to perform transactions through ATMs. How about that? Look at this picture. So you can see that for the first time, they were launching a service using smart watches and mobile to perform banking transactions through ATMs. And the services were really wide. I mean, they performed uh, with their digital portfolios, cash withdrawal, cash deposit, check deposit, inter-account transfers, transfers to the uh, beneficiaries, transfers to local and foreign banks, donations, checkbook requests, account statement requests, opening additional new accounts and investment uh, deposits. It's incredible. And then you can see here that they highlighted the spot transfer service to Kuwait, Turkey using RippleNet. So this is something that they really continued to have a lot of success with. Now I'm going to take you to an article that came out today and you can see that in the news again they are telling everyone that they have some usage growth of 25 percent this is with their digital solutions yeah, 160 million banking transactions i think they had a really fantastic 2021 you can see here that the kfh provides many distinguished and easy digital services such as the instant transfer service to kfh turkey using the ripple net network and the digital wallets service via mobile phones and smart watches to provide the latest smart digital payments method with the highest advanced security standards in cooperation with uh, Garmin, Fitbit, Samsung, and many more electronic banking services. <laughs> that is really, really a very fun update. And they talk about RippleNet Network again down here where you can withdraw within minutes and, and the cash comes out without having any need for uh, all of that time and cost that was so common with those transfers in the past. So great update. Okay, let's jump into a little fluff. Uh, this is a world's first, according to the announcement. It's the notice of a start of a demonstration experiment of DigiPOS. This is a non-contact aerial display technology for POS cash register, and they're going to test it at the 7-Eleven stores here in Tokyo. It will begin on the 1st of February and just six stores to start with, but it supposedly is the world's first demonstration experiment in which an aerial display has been adopted for a self POS cash register. With this technology, they have realized that the self registration screen is imaged in the air and the image floating in the air can be operated in the same way as a touch panel. Through the new shopping experience, they will provide this verification for the purpose of creating sales opportunities by saving space at the cash register counter and uh, providing safety and security through a complete non-contact. So that's the point. They have come up with a way you don't have to touch anything and you can check yourself out. There is a video, I'll play it just so you can see. She scans her item and then, yeah, just touching the air. Then she gets the action that she is desiring to uh, check out. Amazing. Wow, I tell you, we are really moving fast into the future. Well, do take care. Sayonara for now. Bye-bye.